This time, Sark, in this video, we are looking at geometric sequences. So a sequence is geometric if multiplying a term by a fixed non-zero number gives the next term. And for all of n, we can find r, and r is the ratio, and that is equal to u n plus 1 divided by u n. Now in simpler terms, that means the term after another term divided by the term before. So for example, you could do the fourth term, u4, divided by the third time, u3, or you could do uh, the eighth term, u8, divided by u7, which is the seventh term. And all of that would find the same number, as it is a fixed non-zero number. But then the nth term of a sequence can be given by un, which is the nth term, is equal to a, and a is the starting number, times by r, the ratio, which is how we find it here, and then that's the power of n minus 1, and that will come in useful when we know what trying term we're trying to find. So for example, we've got a question here which is all about nth terms, and it says what is the nth term of a geometric sequence 2, 6, 18, 54? And to start this off, what we want to do is we want to find out what r is. And we can do this by saying r is equal, and we can do this by any of them, but we're going to start it simple and say u2 divided by u1. So therefore, 6 over 2, that is equal to 3. So therefore, we have what r is. We also know what a is, because is the first term in the sequence. So a is equal to 2. So that means that our nth term is going to be 2 times by 3 and then n minus 1. So that is our nth term and then we can use this to find out what a particular term is. So for example this one says what is the tenth term. So in order to do this we're just going to put replace the n with a 10 which means that this is going to go to 2 times by 3, and that's going to be 10 minus 1, which is equal to 9. So therefore, we have a long number. is 2 times by 3 to the power of 9, which is equal to 39,366. So we also need to look at geometric series, which is when all the numbers in the geometric sequence are added together. And there are two different formulas, they mean exactly the same thing, they're just slightly rearranged, and sometimes it's easier to use one over the other. However, you can use any of them and it will still work, you just may have harder numbers to work with. So the first one says that Sn, which is just the sum of all numbers, is equal to a, which is the first number, and then brackets r, so the ratio to the n, which is how many numbers there are, minus 1, and that's over r minus 1. And the slight change in this is this a, and then it's 1 minus rn over 1 minus r, so just slight switching around there. But this question asks, evaluate, and it's the sum of 5 times 2k, and then k is equal to 3, and then n is equal to 10. And this is a new way of expressing it, and I'll look at the other way in the next question. But this is a new way of expressing it, and it basically means that this here is the geometric sequence, and then this is the number we start with, and then we can work out n from this. So first of all, if we work out what a is, now a is the first number, so that means that we're just going to put the first thing in, so 5 times 2, and then k is equal to 3, so 5 times 2 to the 3, that is equal to 40. So we have what a is, then r, what we can do is we can work out what the second one is. So then that, to do that, we're going to do 5 times 2 to the 4 this time. That is equal to 80. So therefore, 80 over 40, because it's that second term divided by the first term, is equal to 2. So therefore, r is equal to 2. And then n, now this is where a lot of people get mixed up because we have to be inclusive of them. So we're starting on 3. So it's 10, 3 to 10 inclusive, which means that we count the 3. So therefore, if we we're counting it up just with our hands, we go 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, which is 8 numbers. 
So therefore, n is equal to 8. So it's not as simple as just doing 10 minus 3, but you would just do 10 minus 3 and then add 1. So now we have our different things. We've got a is equal to 40, r is equal to 2, and n is equal to 8. We can put them in. And this one here will be slightly easier to work with. So if we put them in now, we can see that s and then n is equal to a there. So there you've got 40. And then we have r, which is going to be 2. Then n is going to be 8 minus 1 and then r minus 1 is simply 1 2 minus 1 is 1 so therefore we've got 40 and then that's 2 to the 8 minus 1 shove it into your calculator and we're going to get the answer of 10,000 200 and that is our final answer so this question is in a slightly different form to the previous one and this one says evaluate so we're looking at series again 50 plus 40 plus 32 and then it continues and there are 15 terms in the sequence so again the three things we have to work out is what a is what is r and then what is n and we could do n straight away because it says it here. n is just 15. And that's something that's easy about doing this is we don't have to work with anything about it all inclusive that we had to do in the last question. And then a, that's easy as well. That's the first number. First number there, 50. And then r, again, fairly easy. That's just going to be 40 divided by 50 which you can say is 0 0.8. Again, if we did 32 divided by 40, we'd get exactly the same answer. So now we have A, R, and N, we can put them back in. And because R is less than one, it makes sense to do it into this, then we're just not dividing by a negative number. So this time we're gonna work with this particular formula. So that means that we can say SN is equal and then A is 50, so we've got 50, and we've got 1 minus 0 0.8, and then N is 15, and then that is all over 1 minus R, so 0 0.2. Then all you have to do is chuck it into your calculator and to three significant figures, you'll get 241. And that is your answer for that. So slightly easier than the previous question. So the final question today is a slightly harder one. And this one says that Sophie will be paid a salary of 35,000 pounds in 2018. And in each year, she'll get a 3% pay rise. The first increase being in 2019, so that her salaries form a geometric sequence. So it says, the first question is fairly easy. It just says, find the nearest £100 Sophie's salary in 2019. And to do this, we're going to do just compound it. And that means that we're going to say 35,000. And then times that by 1.03. And that's because that's the percentage increase that she's got. And then we have two years there, so that's going to be squared. And that is equal to 337,131 pound 50. And it says finds in those 100 pounds, so that means that we're going to make it 37,100. But B is where it gets slightly harder. And this is our using our knowledge of geometric series. It says that Sophie will receive a salary each year until she retires until at 2037. 
So if I'm to the nearest £100, the total amount Sophie will have earned from 2018 until she retires in 2037. So this means that we're going to have to find what A is, what R is, and then what N is. And A is the first amount, which is £35,000. Because that is our starting value. Then R is a 3% pay rise. So again, every time it's going up by 1.03. But then N is, remember, it's all inclusive. So we're going to go 2037 minus 2018, which is 19. And because it's all inclusive, we're going to add one. So that's going to be N is going to be 20. Because we are counting that 2018 as well as a year. So that means that what we're going to have is... 35,000 and then that's A and then we're going to have R which is 1.03 that's going to be to the power of N which is 20 and then that's going to be minus 1 then this is all going to be over R which is 1.03 minus 1, so 0 0.03. This is therefore equal to a large number of £940,463. Again, it asks for it to the nearest £100, so we can round it up to so 940,000 pounds and then 500. And that is our final answer. So that is using our knowledge of geometric sequences to work out a problem-based um, question. So thank you for watching this video and see you soon. Bye.